So up to this point, we have laid down the, the foundation for understanding what intellectual disability is, the etiology and prevalence of ID, and importantly, how the way in which we provide care for those with ID can significantly impact their overall quality of life. So now we're going to shift to looking at how health issues unique to those with ID can impact the swallowing system. And to do this, we're going to apply the International Classification of Functioning Disability in Health, or the ICF model, as a framework for our assessments that are so critical to creating effective dysphagia management plans. I think this model is straightforward yet robust and even in some ways elegant in terms of how it works. So as we look at this model at the top, you can see that we have the health condition. This is the primary condition that impacts our activity at the center of the model. In the case of adults with ID, these could be neuromotor disorders such as cerebral palsy, genetic disorders such as Down syndrome, or even psych psychiatric disorders. Then to the very left, we have body function and structure. And this is going to be anatomic or functional impairments of the body that are impacting the activity at the center of the model. Moving to the center and the far right are activities and participation. Activity is going to be referring to the thing that the patient is or is not able to do because of impairment, and participation are the things that the patient wants to do but is restricted because of the limitation. Environmental factors are supports to improve function, or they could be barriers that cause further decline. For example, verbal cues that we might be using to help slow rate during oral intake, or it could be caregivers that are feeding too rushed or too fast that can cause impairments in swallow function. Personal factors are going to include demographic information, personality traits, and of course preferences. So essentially, you can put any activity at the center of this model and then examine how all these components interact with that activity. So with swallowing as our activity at the center of the ICF model, what we're going to do is systematically proceed around the model and plug in all the applicable information that we gather through chart review, clinical assessment, and diagnostic testing to then develop recommendations and ultimately a treatment plan of care. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to use a case study with a pretty complex patient that we're gonna call Mr. Smith, and we're gonna use this Mr. Smith's case study to illustrate the dysphagia management process that we have been discussing thus far today. So for the background for Mr. Smith, he is a 47-year-old nonverbal, non-ambulatory male with severe intellectual disability and multiple congenital abnormalities. His developmental milestones were reported as delayed but he was able to learn to feed himself and he was able to learn some of his ADLs, his activities of daily living, things such as uh, dressing himself, putting on his shirt, putting on his pants, things like that. While Mr. Smith is nonverbal, he does communicate through some manual sign. He also uses natural gestures, direct action and body movements, as well as facial expressions and non-speech vocalizations to communicate uh, basic wants and needs. Mr. Smith lived at home throughout his adolescence and he was admitted to an ICF at his parents' request as they were no longer able to provide all of his daily care. Although Mr. Smith lives at our State Support Living Center, his mother still has legal guardianship and he, she makes all of his medical decisions for him. 
one of Mr. Smith's guardian's decisions that she has made for him was that um, Mr. Smith's mother does not want any alternative means of nutrition and hydration for her son. She wants him to continue to eat orally throughout his life and that uh, she listed him as a DNR or a do not resuscitate code status. Mr. Smith was referred to my team, the physical nutritional management team, for reports of both frequent emesis and significant weight loss. And at first glance, the issue here might seem blaringly obvious to you. The patient is throwing up, hence he's losing weight. Well, as you will see, this case is quite complex with many issues at play, which is why I feel this is such a great example of how the ICF model can help us to gain a very clear picture of all the factors that need our attention and consideration so we aren't missing the forest for the trees, as it were. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this case and insert each portion of the International Classification of Function, Disability, and Health, the ICF, for feeding and swallowing and see how these activities relate to Mr. Smith's health condition and specifically his rumination syndrome. As we work through each of the factors in the ICF model, we will use this information to create an effective treatment plan for Mr. Smith. But as we go through this, keep in mind that you can put any health condition and any activity into this model for your patient.